Hi everybody, and welcome to this video titled Explicit and Tacit Ethics from Machine Learning Researchers. I am John Gallagher. I'm an associate professor at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, uh, and I have produced and created this video along with the help of, uh, as you see in this slide, Antonio Hamilton and Rebecca Avostopoulos. Uh, and we are reporting on a large-scale uh, interview study that we have done. And so I'm going to take you through this video um, and then sort of talk about some of the implications and some of the practical impl uh, some of the practical uses of this video at the end. So, uh, as I said, I am John Gallagher. I'm an associate professor here at the University of Illinois, uh, Urbana-Champaign. And um, I wanted to sort of begin by sort of thinking about uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence specialists, thinking about ethics in a variety of ways. Right? And the ethical considerations we identify here allow an informed understanding of those researchers, their perspectives, rather than government or institutional perspectives. And we think, as we're going to argue throughout this video, we think this is going to be a useful perspective for thinking about ethics and for developing AI audits. So, what do we think sort of very specifically could happen? So, if, if we adopt and think about and describe these researchers' perspectives, right? We can uh, develop better informed parameters to conduct AI audits, uh, communicating with broader audiences about ethical impacts of the models, and, right, just think about some of the themes that are important to these specialists, right? Because if, if we really drill down and think about it, right, where the machine learning is happening is where sort of the ethics is probably most important. So, Let's talk a little bit about the study and what exactly did we do. It's a good idea to get a sense of the data we had. So I conducted the interviews from the fall of 2020 to August of 2022. There were I conducted 108 interviews, um, and there were 105 of them were over Zoom and three were over the phone. Uh, 93 hours of uh, recordings, 98 of the participants, 98 of the 108 people hold PhDs. Um, so these are smart cookies. Um, and 80, 80 of the participants are on the record using their real names. And of course, this is IRB approved. Uh, 20172 is the IRB approval study. So let me offer you sort of a, a, a couple brief summaries of uh, some of our findings. So we sort of have sort of two forms of ethics that we found. One is explicit ethics loosely corresponds to human subjects. When people are doing research about human subjects, when they're doing machine learning research about human subjects, when they're doing AI research about human subjects, then they think about uh, uh, ethics explicitly. But there's also sort of a subterranean, a more tacit version of thinking about ethics. And the tacit version of ethics corresponds to sort of the technical elements about machine learning and AI. So just rethinking that, that summary in a little bit of a different way, Right. Ethics is an explicit concern when research has a direct impact on humans or human subjects are needed for research. So we could think about this in sort of uh, practically two ways. One is people think about ethics explicitly when the implications of their work is for human beings and also when they're dealing with human subjects data, such as, you know, scraping data off of a, a community, off of Reddit or some sort of internet forum. Um, it's a little bit more tacit when the, the that that human impact is not quite clear and or the human subjects are not needed for the research. That's sort of the executive summary. Now here's the outline of the rest of this presentation. Part one is we're going to talk about application and domain context where ethics is applicable. Then we're going to talk uh, a little bit more in depth about the differences between explicit and tacit ethics that we found. Uh, part three, we're going to talk about the ethical questions for training data. And then we're going to talk about the problem of hype. And so this is the sort of an ethical, ethical implications and ethical thoughts that we found from our data from this research project. Part one, applications and domain contexts. So even though participants' responses, responses were varied and heterogeneous, right, we did find sort of there were, there were two um, sort of main uses here. One was thinking about for public use, right, ethics and public use, and then ethics for technical functionality, right? So thinking about uh, transparency of the model, thinking about repl replication, thinking about sort of the technical details, you know, the math, the sort of being uh, transparent about the math and how the math works. Um, and 
when people were sort of talking uh, ex explicitly about ethics, we found that there was a trend in the domains that they came from, right? So the example domains that we could talk about here were the people who uh, t thought explicitly about ethics were from natural language processing, uh, cognitive psychology, software engineering, and human-centered machine learning. Uh, no surprises here, but I thought we think it's good to sort of point out. Um, now, when the technical applications were expressed as sort of a tacit ethics, we found that there were other kinds of domains here um, where people were thinking about ethics uh, a little bit more implicitly. And these are sort of agricultural automation engineering, statistical analysis, astroinformatics, data visualization, and electrical computer engineering. Part two. Now, we're sort of thinking about this explicit and tacit ethics, and um, explicit ethics highlight the human component directly, meaning uh, participants directly talked about it, and they, were, they spoke directly to it. Um, and this is Ross Clark. Uh, this is an, a pseudonym. I'll, I'll tell you when the, it's a pseudonym versus not. Um, and, and Ross Clark says, is this AI set up to improve our real life, to make our life better, more richer, more interesting, and all that, or is it going to take advantage of us in some way? All right. And so uh, Clark really highlights an important theme that we saw from our participants that was related to this role of intent, right? And thinking about what you could intend your application to do and what you didn't want, what you didn't intend your application to do. Here's Lou Lefton, um, and real name. Uh, and Lefton says, good artificial intelligence obviously makes the world better, and bad artificial intelligence either keeps the world the same or makes it worse. So similar to, similar to Clark, uh, Lefton highlights that AI needs to have a positive impact, right? So thinking about impact, right? consequentialism here, and thinking about sort of how to execute and predict the consequences of your model, of your machine learning, of your AI. Marcos Ramundo, uh, what is always good machine learning and artificial intelligence is something that we have a social purpose, right? We have a social purpose and we acknowledge, well, ethical problems. So here, right, Ramundo, gets at the idea of thinking about the utility and the application of the AI model, of the AI project. <clears throat> now, we get into a little bit more tacit ethics, right? Tacit ethics highlights the more scientific elements of the technical system. Uh, tacit here means that ethics are addressed implicitly through other concepts such as, right? Ethics could be a version of just simply good machine learning. So if somebody thinks about, oh, this is good machine learning, that's sort of a version of ethics, right? It's a, it's a normative framework. Uh, ethics could also be considered the, the avoidance of misusing machine learning technical systems. So, you know, avoiding sort of overstatement, um, being very qualif uh, qu adding qualifications to what the model can or cannot do. Um, and thinking about how a model could be used in different settings, sort of a more tacit thinking. Um, and then, for almost just as importantly is thinking about how the model can or cannot be generalized to another context. Um, and so one of the other themes that sort of arrives out of all of these different findings is whether unethical machine learning is really whether it lacks a purpose beyond publication. So many participants talked about, we are trying to design models that aren't just trying to get a publication, but that are actually trying to solve a problem in the world, that are trying to sort of be technically proficient and technically efficient. All right, Mark Jackson, real name. So here's sort of Mark Jackson's take. Good machine learning, I would just say it makes predictions or leads to conclusions which are accurate and which you wouldn't have come up with on your own. Bad machine learning leads to predictions that are either bad or do you have to come up with them, or you would have come up with them already. And so here, Mark Jackson's uh, quote here is, is really important uh, in my view, as well as in my, res in my research assistant's view, because what he's getting at is that you don't want to use machine learning to generate insights that you already have, right? Machine learning should be used to generate insights that you don't have. Um, and you don't want to sort of like over-parameterize and sort of overfit models to the world, to the kind of work you're working on. So Jackson highlights, just to reiterate, accuracy, avoiding confirmation bias, and over-engineering, misusing, misusing machine learning. All right? Here's Kokul Jadika. All right? Real name. Good data science and good machine learning 
projects do not need to be antithetical to ethics. Ethics is not a stuffy word that is trying to interfere when you're doing good data science. In fact, it's going to make your machine learning better. So here's where sort of um, Kogel Jada get, gets at a really important idea of that the technical functionalities are ethics and ethics are part of the technical functionality, right? It's not as though they're separate considerations. It's not as though they happen at separate times. They're sort of intermingled with one another. They're sort of overlapping and intersecting with one another. All right, here's Killian Weinberg. Uh, good machine learning in my eyes is usually if you have some clear insight and in saying, here's this thing that has the following effect and you can use it in this and this circumstance. You distill it really until there is something really clear, but then also transfer it to other settings. So there's sort of two main takeaways from Weinberger's uh, uh, quote. Uh, ethical machine learning is generalizable to other settings. So good machine learning, not bad machine learning, but good machine learning can take one model in one context and it could actually work in another context, right? And of course, bad machine learning wouldn't be able to go into another context, right? And then, being able to clearly identify the effects of machine learning is good machine learning, or another way of saying that, good machine learning, ethical machine learning has clear effects and you can identify what those effects are, right? So one of the things that we've seen in the last couple of years is deep learning machine models and artificial, mo artificial intelligence models that you can't really understand what the model is doing, right? So explainability here, and so this is sort of, you know, ethical AI is explainable and with clear effects. All right, William Esther, pseudonym, says, I think good machine learning are the ones that make our society better, can actually be useful. Bad machine learning are just for publication, just for the purpose of pending another item on one's resume. So here's what we get at, right? Uh, let me just go back for a moment there and just sort of uh, interrogate that, that comment uh, for a little bit. Several of our participants uh, noted that good machine learning wasn't just about publication, right? It wasn't just about getting another line on the CV. And so a lot of our participants were actually committed not just to publishing their work, but also doing good work. And so there was a, it's a very interesting sort of ethical commitment that goes beyond just sort of the job, but actually to the research and commitment to the research and the quality of the research. So quality research is also part of sort of ethical research. So part three, one of the things that we did uh, in the interviews, and we analyzed this, was we asked participants what kinds of ethical questions they asked when collecting, selecting, and using training data, because training data is so important to machine learning and to artificial intelligence more generally. So several of our participants remarked on good data is critical. So here's a sort of a, a simple but good takeaway quote. I think machine learning sometimes is as good as a data set. So you know, there were four themes of the types of questions that we found, right? When selecting, collecting, and using training data, when thinking about training data, we found, we found four main themes that people could take away from here, right? Researchers think about data integrity, societal impact and community, safety, societal safety, and then privacy and security, sort of the, the technical privacy and security. So those are the four themes we found when um, asking participants what kinds of ethical questions they ask when collecting, selecting, and using training data. All right, theme one. This is from Nick Roy, real name. And Nick Roy says, quote, how much data do we actually need? How are we going to get it? What are the operating conditions? What sensor was going to use these operating conditions, et cetera? If there are people involved, and how do you make sure there's informed consent? How are we going to identify the data, especially with people like how much data do we really need, right? So one of the main takeaways from Roy's quote is that data quality is important and we should only collect data that is necessary. You don't wanna to collect too much data, which is really important in the context of sort of uh, the current AI hype where people are you know, building models that use trillions um, of data parameters. You wanna only collect as much data as you really need to train the model. All right. Theme two, uh, social impact and community. This is from Jordan Boyd Graber, real name. One thing that's important is when you get data from communities, are you doing things that would hurt the communities? If you digest all their questions 
and then publish it online as a data set? Does that hurt the livelihood of these organizations? So Boyd Graber really is thinking about how data collection isn't just about human subjects, but it's also about the kinds of people who are generating the data and what kinds of harm or sometimes uh, helpfulness would it be if you published the data and turned it into a data set. Uh, theme three, safety, sort of societal safety. This is Laura Powell, this is a pseudonym. Quote, assuming that data have been collected ethically, which is the first question, but that's beyond this, but can the question that you're asking be uh, interpreted wrongly? Can it be applied badly? Are any of the results of the model such that it would drive people to the wrong decision that it could have a poor effect on health, especially health equity? Okay. So what Powell is talking about here is thinking about how a model could be deployed and have negative consequences. So thinking about consequences, consequentialism, and thinking about sort of how the technical elements could impact society. Theme four, privacy and security, sort of the more technical side of things. Uh, this is from Joe Ward, a pseudonym. Uh, then also thinking about more specific questions, such as are you being careful with personally identifying information um, as through the uh, data pipeline, and how, how are you safeguarding that? Um, and this is really important because a lot of our participants talked about a data pipeline, meaning that it wasn't just about collecting data, and it wasn't just about analyzing data, it wasn't just about structuring data, it was sort of the broad pipeline of, of, of data sets that they go through when they are collected, transformed, and used in machine learning. So we could think about this as one of the critical elements of machine learning, and one of the critical elements brought more broadly about AI, is thinking about data pipelines and how the data pipeline is created, processed, circulated, distributed, and then sort of added to the model and how the model draws upon that data pipeline. And all of those choices about that data pipeline are ethics. All right, and then finally, one of the other ethical uh, concerns from our participants was this problem of hype, all right? And uh, participants reported addressing sort of two main concerns, right? One were the public concerns that AI will replace humans, a lot of people, um, our participants reported that they perceived people being worried about that. And the second point is uh, the misunderstanding about the capabilities of AI. Um, and we, we sort of, uh, my grad students and I sort of playfully call this like the Hollywood hype problem. And the public concerns that AI will replace hype could, comes from William Esther, quote, some people, maybe only a couple of persons, talk about the superhuman performance of machine learning, the revolutionizing style of machine learning models that they will make other others jobless, all kinds of hype. That, I think, um, to, put, um, to put the entire community in, I don't know, an interesting position, right? So what, what Esther is, is tr trying to articulate here is that people are worried about joblessness. They're worried about AI taking jobs. Um, but the people who are doing the research, they're not really sure how to address this problem. They recognize that it's part of their responsibility, but they really don't know how to do it. They don't really, they aren't able to sort of think about all the different implications for the models that they're creating. Um, and so they think about how lay people have this fear and about how they might need to allay that fear. And then this is probably the most common one that we are reporting on. It happened, um, numerous participants reported on the, the Hollywood hype problem. And this is from Neil Fultz, real name. And uh, Fultz says, the big problem is that there is a lot, I don't know, hyper misconceptions out there about what these things actually are. These things meaning AI. I usually try and phrase these things as like, I will take your data and run the numbers or whatever, instead of trying to say like, you know, AI is, you know, I don't want to set a bad, bad expectations or, you know, overhype AI for what it can and can't do. Um, and so the specialists report that lay people tend to not have a technical understanding of what AI is, and specialists try to be tactful and to try to avoid creating misconceptions about AI and about machine learning specifically. So what are some of the takeaways for everybody sort of watching this video and what are the takeaways for you at home? Um, so we came up with sort of two, two versions of takeaways. The first is takeaways for machine learning researchers, right? 
First point, ethics can be part of the technical details as well as the societal considerations. So good science and rigorous model modeling are versions of an ethical stance, right? So transparency, rigor, all of these things are a version of ethics that we would say that machine learning researchers want to do and that that could be a version of ethics. So the second takeaway is for AI auditors who are sort of trying to write AI audits about machine learning models and AI models. First point we wanna make is writing audits should consider the ethical perspectives of the developers as much as the policy. So thinking about what are the kinds of pressures that machine learning researchers are facing? What kinds of ethics do they have? What kinds of things do they consider? That should be part of the auditing as well as sort of uh, normative policies coming from governments and other institutions. Um, the second main point has sort of some of these, as you can see here, some of these subtle points, but ethics may exist in places where it is not explicit. So people are actually doing a lot of ethical work, at least from, at least from the project that we're reporting on here, right? And where could it be that we may not see it? So ethics could be in the technical details. So you wanna go look at the mathematical models. You wanna look through the technical details. Ethics could also be very practically in the supplementary files, right? Um, oftentimes papers are published and they're eight pages, they're 12 pages. Several of my participants uh, told me about, you know, the page length when they publish in conference proceedings or even journals, that there's a, there's a constraint with the page length. And so what happens here is they put a lot of interesting details and ethical choices in the supplementary files, right? It could also be in the very creation of the models. So if, you know, thinking about the models, and it could be sort of in the technical documentation that isn't in the publication, that even isn't in sort of the results of the machine learning model, you have to go backwards and look at the process of the model creation. Ethics could also be in the asking of the questions. So going back even further in the research uh, process of looking at the discussions that people are having even before they create the models. What kinds of questions are they asking? So ethics could be formulated in the, in the question itself. And then finally, the last point here is we would also say that asking how the technical researchers, the machine learning researchers, how they construct the public in their mind's eye could also be a version of you know, thinking about how they conceive of ethics, right? How do they conceive of themselves in relation to the public? and what kinds of concerns come out of sort of that ethical relationship. So I'd just like to say that um, this video and this project was funded by uh, the IBM Tech Lab, and I'll just read the funding disclosure. Uh, this material is based upon work supported in whole or in part by the Notre Dame IBM Tech Ethics Lab. Such support does not constitute an endorsement um, by the sponsor of the views expressed in this publication. We'd like to thank our sponsors, both the IBM Tech Ethics Lab and the Department of English for their generous support.